North Gap, I guess you could say, on the on the bridge. That's where they gave us clearance to proceed. I just called them on the radio. We're about a mile. Okay, so we left at four o'clock this morning from Galax City. The Ionian Islands are fading into the distance. We've been motoring for the last, uh, last sort of three hours or so, and Ithaca is way in the distance over there. So this is the beginning of the Gulf of Patras. So I'll file this under the weird phenomenon uh, story. We're out here in the middle of this bay, Gulf of Patras, and there's these waves coming right in, and we're sort of hobby horsing our way through it. There's no real wind, and I have no idea where these waves came from. The only thing I can think of is there's a very shallow area, just maybe a couple hundred feet over this way from there to the shore. It suddenly goes from really deep to like 10 meters to five meters further in there. So maybe it's like the very, very subtle waves that are coming this way get kind of compressed in this shallow area and cause this this chop, but it's really strange because there's like literally there's no wind out. There's three to four knots of wind from behind us actually. And this stuff this I thought it might have been like a, a wake from a long far away ferry. That sometimes happens. Uh, but it hasn't been anything for quite a while. So filed us under strange phenomenon. Alright we reached a destination for tonight. We're off uh, the beach of Maca, Macania, and it is um, right at the kind of last spot before the Rion Bridge here. Uh, this is actually the largest cable suspension bridge in the world, so we'll be passing through there tomorrow morning on our way east. And this is the Gulf of Patras, and then we enter the Gulf of Corinth beyond there, and then that eventually leads into the Corinth Canal. Tomorrow we will transit through the bridge there, the Rion Bridge. You have to call on Channel 14 uh, to let them know you're approaching uh, five miles away, or if you're a bigger ship, 12 miles away. And they direct you through one of the openings of the three openings there. And it was actually kind of interesting the way they describe it. We were listening on Channel 14 to kind of understand what they were talking about. And uh, they tell you to pass through sort of like, you know, pass where there's one on the right and three on the left, meaning there's one pillar on the right and three on the left, or pass right through the center, two on each side, and that's the way they describe it. One on the right, three on the left, and they want you to repeat that when you um, confirm back on the radio. Beautiful view here, the sun is just setting over there. We got some nice kind of pink hues on the horizon, and uh, beautiful colors on the mountaintops there. If you look really closely, you can see um, there are some rows of windmills up on the very ridges there. And it makes a lot of sense here because the wind is really, really strong. We came about 50 miles from Ithaca to the very end of the Gulf of Patras. So that's the, that's the synopsis for today. We had a good day, um, other than the very last couple hours of bashing into the waves, but now we get to um, do a little barbecue chicken if the wind doesn't blow our barbecue out and uh, get some good night's sleep and get ready for the next day. All right, we're approaching the north uh, entrance, north gap, I guess you could say, on the, on the bridge. That's where they gave us clearance to proceed. I just called them on the radio. We're about a mile away, and they uh, told us to continue to proceed through. You can see a couple of the car ferries over here, and one over here is approaching us. Um, not sure if we're going to pass in front of them or behind them, <coughs> but we'll give them the right of way. Um, interesting enough, they, these ferries have a dock on this west side and also on the east side, and they dock on whichever one is downwind and more wind protected. So, kind of nice setup there. So, nice morning here. 
about a half hour after sunrise, passing under the world's largest cable suspended bridge in the world. And a clear day here. We've got 12, 15 knots of breeze right on our nose. So we're going to keep motoring. All right, we're approaching, uh, getting close to Zach, Zach Pactos. You can see the medieval walls, the entrance to the harbor. And if you look up on the hillside there, you can see the ramparts of a kind of rambling castle going up to the top. We may hike up there once we get settled in the harbor. We're gonna anchor over next to this other boat over here and dinghy in. We enjoyed a terrific breakfast at a harborside cafe before walking through the village, then up the steep hillside to the fortresses high above. Very neat and exciting to see this medieval port. Um, I guess it used to be called Lepanto, and uh, the Turks occupied this area and kind of resupplied before the Battle of Lepanto, which um, they did not succeed in. So the Turks were around a lot of these locations and um, battled the, uh, I guess, the Greeks and the Romans. So we're going to check out Zakpantos. There were ancient ruins scattered throughout the hillside, providing evidence of a long civilized region. It was mid-morning when we finished exploring Navpactos, and we wanted to progress further into the Gulf of Corinth, so we set our sights on the island of Trizonia, where we would tuck into their marina. We're on the island of Trizonia in the Gulf of Corinth. There, it's looking north over to mainland Greece. There's my spouse. Mainland Greece. Island of Greece. Yes. And we found this cool little walking path. It's taken us by a uh, local Other cemetery and around the island. So yeah, we're gonna go check it out. Still on our walking path to look over at this wonderful uh, hill over there. It almost looks like a butte and it looks like there's this crazy valley off in behind there. Uh, and you, you don't have to think too hard why there's so many gusty winds that fly through this uh, gulf all the time. Lots of hot land and deep valleys are pulling the wind toward the water all the time. After our end-to-end -end walk of the island of Trizonia in the hot Greek afternoon, we were in need of an adult beverage. The quaint harbor town facing mainland Greece met our needs perfectly. We even ended up having a simple dinner to extend our relaxation. And that is just too cool. yep. We've got a huge tiller and the guy's beeping. Like, you know what? Sorry. Take your time. Let me see, I got the forward gear here somewhere. Let's put my towel right, down. Trying, so. He's just trying to balance weight and everything else. He needs to yeah, care about. Yeah, it'll work out. It's <laughs> good. Next stop after Trizonia, the lovely town on the Greek mainland called Glax City. We anchored outside the harbor to enjoy a cooling breeze. We ventured in and around the town several times. As we passed residential doorways, we noticed these custom nautical door plaques.
Around the harbor, boats were constantly coming and going. Even the local waterfowl have their own boat. We rented a car to drive from Gallic City up to the ancient site of Delphi, which sits on the southwest slope of Mount Parnassus. The drive wound up and up and up. According to the Wikipedia entry stating the history of ancient Delphi, most ruins at the site date from the 6th century BC, but occupation of the site can be traced further back to the Neolithic period, with extensive occupation and use beginning in the Mycenaean period of 1600 to 1100 BC. On the site, visitors can walk around temples, sanctuaries, statues, and altars for Apollo, Athena, and several other gods, as well as a 4,500 spectator theater and a gymnasium used by the youth of Delphi and containing this stadium as well as pools and baths that were said to have magical powers. The views from this mountainside were stunning. So we left at 4 o'clock this morning from Galaxity and uh, we're sailing through the rest, uh, the remaining part of the Gulf of Corinth and um, we left so early so that we could avoid strong winds this afternoon. Uh, we got turned back yesterday. Uh, we had up to a gust of up to 40 knots and we went back. We were a couple hours out and we turned around and went back to Galaxity. So we're going to try to get close to the um, Corinth Canal today. It's just really, really inconsistent through here. We've had um, winds, uh, pretty much calm winds, and then the winds came up at the anchorage this morning to about 15 knots, uh, gusting to 20. We motored away and the winds died down completely. And then we had winds from the south, and then like 30 seconds later from the northeast. And northeast is where it's supposed to come from, and now they've been pretty, pretty consistent northeast winds. We were motoring for about two, uh, two, two and a half hours, and then um, even though we probably could have sailed through part of that, it was just too shifty. And um, you know, it would go from like 10 knots to 30 knots to 15 knots to five knots, all in the course of a couple minutes. So we've had some pretty consistent winds now of um, 18 to 20. So we've raised uh, both main and jib, uh, both double reefed, and that seems to be doing pretty well. We were motoring at about seven knots and we're sailing at about 7.2, so, um, and it's definitely more comfortable than motor. It's pre-dawn right now, sun's supposed to rise in about half an hour or so, um, and uh, you can see our sails are, we've got a double reefed main and a double reefed jib and that seems to be doing okay. We could probably shake out a reef um, but the gusts come suddenly <laughs> and furiously so we got plenty of speed on so we're not really, that speed is not an issue. Actually I can feel a gust coming on now so that's 25 knots right there so we wouldn't want any more sail area up right now with this kind of wind. So we'll plug along here and we got a couple more hours to clear the opening, this wide open area of the Corinth, uh, Gulf of Corinth. And then we'll be, in, we'll be in a little bit more protected waters at that point behind a headland, getting closer to the Corinth Canal at that point. So we got a couple Nine hours. Knots. Nine knots. Okay. So there. Nine knots of speed? We hit nine knots of speed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's my groggy wife. <laughs> so we're back to sailing again and uh, we've got wind out of kind of the west, maybe a little bit uh, west-southwest. Kind of a um, almost 180 degree difference from the wind we had early this morning when we were sailing along at almost nine knots. So um, there was a bit of a lull there for about an hour while the wind was shifting and um, Sometimes when you get a lull like that, you're not too sure if the wind is sort of softening and it's going to come back later, or if the wind's sort of dying for the day. Uh, but this was clearly, we were kind of passing through a kind of a null zone where 
uh, wind was coming from one direction on one side of the gulf and wind from the other side, uh, other, other direction from the other side of the gulf. So we're in the new wind and uh, it's still workable. We're kind of on a reach doing, doing quite nicely. Um, we've got about six knots of boat speed and wind right at our beam at about 12 knots. It's a race to the canal. Right, Kevin? We're going over seven knots. Normally we don't motor this fast. It's not very efficient for fuel consumption, but we're trying. The canal is, um, how far away? Like 10 uh, minutes? It's three and a quarter miles. Three and a quarter miles, so about a half an hour for us. Um, straight ahead there, and we were just passed by a powerboat down there. We're trying to kind of get in queue here so we don't have to wait. So we called uh, uh, Port Canal Authority on Channel 11 just a little while ago and told them that we were an hour away and they said to call with, when we were within two miles of the entrance. So presumably they'll give us the thumbs up then or tell us to wait. One way or another we're going to get through today I think. I feel pretty good about that. There are two bridges that we go over meaning that they lower the bridges down under the water and you go over the bridge, which is kind of a trip. Never seen that done before. <laughs> Approaching the Corinth Canal now, we're uh, about a mile away. You can see it looking right down there. One large motor yacht's already started through. We're supposed to call here shortly to wait to see if we can proceed. Okay, I just called the uh, Corinth Canal Authority and they said uh, stand by outside the entrance here. We have about a 45 minute delay. All right, we're just giving the clear, all clear. These um, other boats have gone by in our direction and we've got a passenger uh, vessel up here that actually has the name Catamaran. So he told me to follow the Catamaran, which I thought was a sailboat, Catamaran sailboat that had gone through earlier. But now I understand. So they came through and they turned around and they're going back the other way. Maybe it's like a little tour of the canal. Take it all back and fly Higher up above the open sea Into another destiny I close my eyes. It is supposedly the most expensive canal per mile, uh, per length, than anywhere in the world. It's going to cost us about 200 euros, roughly, to get through. And like I said, three and a half miles. But we don't have an option other than going around the Peloponnese Peninsula and back up upwind to get back up to this area, so that will be a lot longer transit. behind us. We're going pretty fast. We're pushing the engine so they're not able to quite keep up but hopefully that'll let us get on the dock um, so we can go in and pay uh, and uh, get settled before they come back.
Maybe I was blind on you forever while I tried to find Someone that could be my great love Right in front of me I didn't realize you were my dream So you took me by surprise Oh yeah Giving in my wildest dreams We're so excited to have made it across the Gulf of Corinth and through the Corinth Canal. We have chemistry, but always chasing after someone else. So this took me by surprise. Oh, yeah. We are at the eastern end of the Corinth Canal, and this roadway that is the yellow and black um, surface in front of us was just raising so now people can walk across I'm not sure if this is a, um, a car roadway or whether just pedestrians and bikes um, seemed as though it might be just pedestrians and bikes kind of the chaos of this, this end of the canal we got buses that have just come from a uh, tour and um, so they're getting off their tour boat and I'm going up to the canal authority office up here to pay the toll Get a little fill up of diesel and we'll be all set. So what a scream. They actually bring the diesel right to you. So in addition to um, getting paying all of our tolls, we're gonna get a little diesel. Uh, we're at 60%, so since we're already out of dock, we might as well fill up. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notified of new videos. Join us next time as we spend time exploring the Saronic Gulf before moving on to the famous Kiklati Greek Islands. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give our video a like if you did. Thanks for watching.